Why, hello, and welcome to a match between Solo Yellow and Skywrath Tards. Um, the match is about to go underway, and my name is Radnor, and I will be casting this match here tonight. And uh, let's see how the pick goes. Team and you see the first bands are already underway. We've got Batrider for Solo Band. Yolo and Keeper of the Light out for Skywrath Tarts. Um, Mix Assassin is soon to follow. And um, one more band before Solo Yolo gets first pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. And they are using up some of the reserve time here, as you see. They're down to about 107 already. Uh, they just want to make sure they ban out the the right heroes. You don't want to give someone the advantage with this first pick, and uh, they're they're taking everything into consideration before they give this pick out. And the Magnus will be the final ban for the first stage. And as we see, Wisp or Io is being picked up by Solo Yolo. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. And as you see, Darkseer will be the pick for Skyrath, um, as well as there's the Phantom Lancer. Radiant team pick. Great team ability with the Dark Seer and excellent late game with that Phantom Lancer. The counter picks for that will be a Lone Druid from Solo Yolo and the Chaos Knight. Great, great um, cooperative ability there with the Io and the Chaos Knight very dangerous duo uh, as well as the lone druid him and his bear are able to do great damage to towers especially especially if you have the relocate from the Ten IO and the chaos remaining. knight you have no idea when or where you could Five be under attack from them remaining. and uh, that, add, that adds an extra step of fear to the table and we're gonna see how the skywrath is going to come back and choose to uh, pick for their last pick before the next stage of bands come out. Ten seconds remaining. Rubik. And a Rubik will come out. Um... Puck will be the first ban of the second stage coming out for Solo Yolo. Sort of a unique pick here with the Rubik. As of right now, not a whole lot in the way of um, of spells to steal. You don't have the Magnus's RP or the the ability to you know have some big st spell steals. Um, one of the reasons why Io is such a, a good hero is the ability to tether and then relocate and Rubik would only get one or the other so he could either tether or he could relocate but as 
we'll see how it goes. Um, as we do see, here comes the Bane and the Shadow Demon. Supports are be being taken out um, from both sides right now. Just, you don't want that enfeeble on your big damage characters. It can slow down heavy pushes. Um, the Fiend's Grip can definitely hold even your biggest, tankiest heroes in place and allow allow you to kill them quickly. And we're going to see Tidehunter uh, being banned out here as well. That Ravage, uh, you don't want that Ravage coming up against you. And Queen of Pain has been banned out by Soul Yellow. We've got one more ban before we go into the last two pick stages here. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And we see a Lashrak being banned out. Invoker. And an Invoker gets picked up by Solo Yolo. The Lashrak was a good pick to ban. Um, you just don't want him being able to push with that lone druid in his bear. That dire edict on the towers can do immense amounts of damage and if you give that along with the lone druid you can have major major problems. And we're gonna see a warlock come out for Skywrath and a lich come out for Solo Yolo. So we've got one more pick and this match is gonna be underway. Ten seconds remaining. This Skywrath team has been very remaining. calculated in their picks. They have uh, used up the majority of their reserve time. And we see an Undying come out. Great, great push potential. Um, the Flesh Golem has great survivability. A uh, good pick there from Skywrath. Good, uh, good choices all around. And this match is going to be underway. And uh, I personally am excited to see how this turns out, as well as uh, everyone watching this video. So, and this could this could technically go either way. You could see it going very early on for Solo Yolo with their team. They have major damage very quickly. But if it goes late game, that Phantom Lancer is not going to be Prepare a hero for to forget. He will be doing some huge damage the later the game goes. So he's going to be someone to keep an eye on as it gets into the late game. And I'm going to go over who's on what. We've got I Want Techies on Invoker. We've got Lucy in the Sky on IO. QT. Three one four one five nine two six on Lone Druid. We've got Boobsies on Lich and Amped on the Chaos Knight. We've got at Spank Style on Warlock, Trinibed on Phantom Lancer, Sohinky on Undying, City Chicken on Dark Seer, and Tactical to Tauntaun on Rubik. And as you see, we have the lanes are going to be a Phantom Lancer, and it looks like Rubik on top for the Dire. Um, probably to be met with the Undying here. In the mid, you are going to have Warlock for the Dire team, and Darkseer on bottom to be met by... The battle begins. What looks like a Lich Lone Druid 
combo up top. Um, we have the Chaos Knight Io going mid. And we have Invoker on bottom. So, and as you heard, Lone Druid did pick up the double damage already. And uh, this match is definitely underway. Some creep pulling here from Lone Druid's bear. He is helping bring those creeps down to Lone Druid to get the, the farm. And, um... Now the, the only problem I see with this is that with Io in the mid lane with the Chaos Knight, it's going to take longer for both of them to get to level 6 than it's going to take for this Warlock. And as you see, he's already at level 2 and Io is just about to come into level 2 now. So, I mean, unique way to set this up, but as of right now you can see they are dominating this creep wave and keeping the warlock back as he is afraid to pressure that combo. Um, Invoker on bottom doing okay. He is at 4 CS but he is being beat out by the 7 CS of Darkseer. So um, that ion shell even early on is able to give some major help for the CS and as you see it melts through those creeps very quickly. And up on top you see creeps coming in and Lone Druid here taking care of them along with some help from the Lich. And Io has picked up the haste rune in the mid um, and he is coming in fast. And they are going to tether up and um, be able to clear out this creep wave without any problem. We've got some damage coming out on the Phantom Lancer up top. He is just getting some harassment dealt to him. Nothing big right now. Neither of these teams are really initiating. They're both just getting the farm they need, trying to get as strong as they can before they go through the process of initiating on the other team here. So his bottom tower is under attack. I feel sad for them. And I'm sorry about that guys. I did miss the first blood. That went very quickly down on the bottom lane. Invoker got first blood on the Dark Seer. Um as you see, he did use the cold snap, the ability to slow down the Dark Seer. Even with that surge, he was able to get the kill, and um, he's going to be going for Sunstrike for his next skill. So, methinks you wanted that. Invisibility. And we've got Io coming in on the Undying. The Decay is cast. Those creeps are actually going to come out and give some harassment to the Undying, but nothing really big here. Um, we've got Invoker running on some slightly lower damage on the bottom. He's going to be okay. He's going to be able to heal up and uh, continue to get his farm that he needs. And the Fatal Bonds are cast on Io and Chaos Knight here, but as you see, they're going to be able to uh, heal up with tangos and everything's going to be okay. 
The bottle was used on Warlock and he is able to survive as well. He again casts that Shadow Word on to Chaos Knight and uh, Chaos Knight is going to sit here hoping not to die and he survived with 12 health left. The tether comes and he will be healed up very quickly from that Io. Again, great synergy between these two heroes and that is why they are such a dangerous combo. As you saw, he was very low on health and he was able to bring him back up to almost three quarters health. And Undying is actually getting his farm through the jungle here. Uh, he is only to level 2. He is... Oh, and I am sorry, but the kill goes to the Chaos Knight in the mid. Warlock does fall, and they're going to go up and put some damage onto this tier 1. As you see, we do have wards out. We've got wards from the Dire team here in the Radiant Jungle and here, keeping an eye on this bottom lane. And uh, we do have a sentry ward up top um, from the Radiant side. So, general warding around. Um, we do have this observer ward in. And as you saw, Chaos Knight takes down the Warlock again. Um, very, very quick takedown of the Warlock. And again, they're going to push towards this tower and let that Siege Creep do damage to this Tier 1 tower. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It has no arms to defend itself. Dyer's middle tower is all alone in the world, being attacked. And the teleport comes back in. We've got Warlock coming back mid. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, that's got to hurt. And Dark Darkseer did just bring down the Invoker on the bottom lane. Um... But Invoker bought back and is already back into the bottom lane. And we've got another death up in mid lane. That Warlock is just dying against this Chaos Knight IO combo. And as we see, the relocate is loaded onto that IO. With his bottle, he was able to restore up. And we're going to start seeing some major... damage come out. Early Phantom Lancer did fall on top, but the Invoker did fall on bottom. And as you see, Darkseer is going to survive out with very little damage. Or very little health left. Bottom tower is under attack. I feel sad for them. And the Rubik fell here in the jungle from the Chaos Knight. The relocate worked perfectly. The top tower is doing its best, but it doesn't look good. And as you see, damage is being done up here to the top tower. Phantom Lancer is trying to hold back the bear. But the entangle proc does come off, but it is on an illusion. So you see Lich and the bear are going to be going back. And Chaos Knight fell here. The golem comes out. That golem does an immense amount of damage, especially if you are not ready for it and it's going to start doing damage to this tower here but it is going to be pulled back by the gods the dyer's bottom tower doesn't even have arms to defend itself what a brave tower and dyer's top tower is under attack oh that's got to hurt and you see the invoker is down here on bottom uh... pushing 
towards that bottom tower of the dire. And the tether comes in, they are going to go Reality Rift on the Warlock, and oh. Warlock falls very fast. No real survivability from this Warlock here in mid, and as we're going to see, a relocate is coming out, and they're going bottom. They're going to be going... Reality Rift comes out on the Rubik. Rubik will telekinesis up the... The Chaos Knight, he is going to be relocated back. They were able to get the Darkseer out, and they were able to get the kill on the Dire Courier, but they did not get the Rubik down the here in the jungle. Is doing its best, but it doesn't look good. And as you see, the Lone Druid is going to be able to take down fallen, this top tower of time. for the, the Dire. So the Tier 1 is tower is done, and uh, they're putting some pressure on the Tier 1 tower in the mid. You've got Io, Lich, and attack. Chaos it Knight. No arms to defend itself. And some pressure bottom coming out on the Invoker, but he does survive. And as you see, this lone druid is not stopping his push. He is going for that tier 2 tower. He's got the creep wave behind him, he's got Dias the bear and the siege creep. He is going to go for this tower. Phantom Lancer comes in with the Spirit Lance, trying to take down the bear, but the bear is doing good damage on the tower. And they'll take the tower down to half health in a very short amount of time. And the tether comes back up. Reality Rift is cast. Warlock is going to fall again. This Warlock just cannot live against this Chaos Knight Io Wisp combo. And as you see, the Invoker is able to take down the Rubik without a problem. He is just causing great amounts of damage to this team. And the tier 1 falls in mid. Radiant is pushing great, and that just the, the relocate is coming out, and we see them going. Dominating! <laughs> Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Going bottom, the Undying falls. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Run, little bottom tower. Run! And as you see, they're pushing onto this tier Dyer's one tower, and it's going to fall under, very quickly. Dyer's bottom tower was never my favorite. We've got Armlet coming out to the Chaos Knight, and um, <laughs> the tether is being used. With a, a creep, Hyo just using it for the extra, the extra movement speed, of course. And um, it looks like we're going to have some initiation up here on top. The totem is cast. The tether is cast as well. They're going to get that cast knight out of there, even with the zombies following. The spirits are going to be able to keep him alive without any problems. And we're one second away from relocate. The radiant should really do something about that middle tower. Rubik fell in three hits there. 
The reality rift was cast. We're going to see them come up. The relocate is coming out. They come up top. The dust is thrown. As you see, they are going to do the damage to Phantom Lancer right here. Great, great teamwork there. The golem comes out. The flesh golem comes out. The fatal bonds is tied between... And we have the GG already. 15 minute match. Like I said, if this match were to get past 30 minutes, it would have been Phantom Lancer's game the whole way. But by coming and destroying this team very quickly and early on with that re relocate from the IO, as you can see, there is no one that this team cannot beat. They are very, very easily able to just jump anywhere and destroy any of the opponents, causing them to lose their farm that they have worked hard for. I mean, and as you see, seven kills here, it, it makes sense why, why the GG was already called. They were able to do that damage very quickly, get in there and get out with that relocate ability, and it just shows the true synergy between Io and Chaos Knight. If it wouldn't have been for that and the game would have gone long, it could have gone to the way of that Phantom Lancer, but without giving him the farm needed and the gold needed that it would have taken him to get through that time, we see that it ends very quickly. And I'd like to thank you t for joining me tonight. Again, my name is Radnor. You can follow me on Twitch, YouTube, and I am available to be messaged on any of those. If you have any questions or comments, I would be glad to hear them. You can also send me a message on Steam. My name is Radnor in brackets, SW, as you see it on the screen. Uh, thank you for listening to this, this cast, and...